what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so i'm going to check out the rise and downfall of bobby lashley's wwe career now this is very unfortunate because i do feel like bobby lashley is a uh a great piece to wwe it has been a great piece but i just felt like the little momentum that he would have it would ultimately get snuffed out because of creative it's not because people weren't interested in him it's because of it's essentially creative i believe uh bobby had recently came out uh this past week talking about how he felt that vince mcmahon understood him more and treated him like a a star more than triple h has done and you can honestly tell i i don't know why outside of him being injured um earlier this year and him not being on television i don't understand why he wasn't really featured in a prominent role especially under the triple h regime vince looked at bobby as a star and maybe you can say because of you know his physical aesthetics and bobby hadn't looked like he aged since he was originally in wwe many years ago so he's always kept up with his physique and you know it was just one of those things where you could tell when he when bobby made those comments it made sense because vince looked at him as like as a star but even though he looked at him as a star they still did things that really didn't i guess you can say didn't make him look like a star more than he should have and prime example the hurt business was a really good thing and we all heard about the reports of Vince just canceling it because he just didn't see anything else for them to do, which I think was a miss opportunity. Hell, we never even really got that opportunity of maybe doing something with, uh, you know, uh, the um, Bobby Lashley and Montez Ford and, and Angelo Dawkins, the Street Profits, and maybe getting them lined up, maybe with the bloodline at some point. We never really got that. That could have been something good. Him feuding with Roman, that could have been something good. They just chose not to do it. And it's very unfortunate that most likely probably he will be leaving the company. And I think it's just, you know, that's a missed opportunity. So we're going to check this out. Appreciate all love and support. Don't want to take too much time. Let's get right into it, man. On the March 1st, 2021 episode of Money at Raw, Bobby Lashley faced The Miz for the WWE Championship. Although The Miz attempted to escape and manipulate the situation to his conniving advantage, the almighty Lashley was impatient and eventually got his hands yeah. on the now not so awesome A-lister. He absolutely destroyed The Miz and locked in his devastating, muscling down, hurt lock submission hold. The Miz had no choice but to submit and Bobby Lashley was declared the winner, capturing the WWE Championship for the first time in his career it was a monumental yeah, moment was. in lashley's long enduring pro wrestling career solidifying his it would have been even better if there was fans there i think that would have been a, a really great moment for bobby but i do remember this and i thought okay we're doing something we're doing something with him you know position is one of the top superstars in wwe his alignment with mvp and the hurt business faction was one of the main reasons for his success he had a dominant title reign and feuded with wrestlers like drew uh -huh. mcintyre braun Strowman, and goldberg before losing the title for the first time to big e yeah after this lashley didn't achieve the same level of success also, WWE broke up that Hurt Business faction that was built around him for apparently no clear reason, which negatively impacted his momentum. Now in 2024, it seems like he could be on his way out of WWE, at least by the last time we checked when we recorded this. Whether he will re-sign or pursue other opportunities in the world of combat sports and pro wrestling is unclear, but he yeah. still has much to offer to the world of professional wrestling and WWE. Stand back. There there's a new wrestling quiz coming Yeah, through. it does Check seem like he may be out the door, out. man. Let's get into it. The rise and dominating power that is Bobby Lashley. This is Sports Key to Wrestling. I'm Kevin Kellum. What is your take on Bobby Lashley? Let us know in the comments below. Lashley was born into a United States military family and competed in collegiate mat wrestling, winning national titles. He was pursuing the biggest stage for any legitimate wrestling competitor, the Olympics. In 03, he was training to potentially represent the United States in the 2004 Summer Games, but he witnessed an armed bank robbery where evading the armed assailants, 
he unfortunately injured his knee, and that would basically take out his Olympic dream. After healing from the yeah, knee surgery, WWE great Gerald Briscoe came calling for the formidable grappler to take on the show business side of pro wrestling. Lashley made his debut with the WWE developmental territory Ohio Valley Wrestling mm -hmm. as Blaster Lashley in January <laughs> 2000. <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> The last report, obviously, but, you know, is part of his name, but just blaster? I, I, no, bro. Give it, I'm glad that that wasn't the case. <laughs> In five, quickly, he made it to the main roster of WWE. Brock Lesnar may have left the WWE around this time, but the company found someone within the same mold, a collegiate wrestler who had a standout look in Lashley. Lashley looked like the perfect guy to be maybe that next Lesnar. Both of them had similar backgrounds. Lesnar was a collegiate wrestling champion, as well as Lashley, who was a three-time NAIA national champion. Upon arriving on the main roster, Lashley quickly established himself as a dominant head-turning force with his impressive impressive physique and amateur wrestling background. His powerful in-ring performances and just natural charisma on camera made him a standout right away. One of his first big moments came at the Royal Rumble in 2006. Mm -hmm. Upon entering, Lashley immediately showcased his strength and agility. He quickly overpowered several competitors, yep, eliminating Sylvan and quickly making his presence felt in the big multi-man match. During this same match, Lashley faced off with several established WWE names, including other fellow big men like Kane and The Big Show. These confrontations allowed him to display his ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the biggest big men in the business, and he felt like a superstar immediately, mm -hmm. on par with people very quickly. And WWE knew they had something special. His performance in the Rumble elevated his status within WWE. At WrestleMania 22, the showcase of the mortals he competed in the money in the bank ladder match in chicago what? he Is was that one of turkey? the favorites to win but it was rob van dam's night to take the briefcase down from the ladder despite the loss lashley maintained the momentum as wwe kept him strong advancing him to the final round of the king of the ring tournament he then went on to win the United States Championship from JBL, but lost it to Finley just two months later. This was done because bigger and better things were in store for Lashley. In November of 2006, Lashley moved to the rebooted ECW brand under mm -hmm. the WWE banner and went on to win the ECW Championship in the Extreme Elimination Chamber match at the December to Dismember pay-per-view. Yeah, now overall, a lot of people don't <laughs> fondly remember that match, but it was certainly a big breakthrough moment for Bobby Lashley in retrospect in his story. Although it was a controversial event, Lashley benefited a lot from this big win. He successfully defended his title against the likes of Big Show, Rob Van Dam, Test, Hardcore Holly, Kenny Dykstra, and Mr. Kennedy. Then he became the first person to break Chris yep, Masters. I remember Master watching lock. that too. WWE was giving him these special moments, a lot of TV time to tell the fans that he was going to be the next big star. And he was going to be a part of one of the biggest and most lucrative angles that WWE yep. would do around this time. In 2007, future U.S. President Yes, we're serious. That's crazy. Donald Trump you think about selected it. Bobby Lashley to represent him in the Battle of the Billionaire. Going against Umaga, man. Rest in peace, Umaga, bro. And it's just crazy because I remember this. And I remember it was, I think it had, was it was it an ECW show? I think it was. It was like a steel cage match. Bobby Lashley was in the steel cage. Umaga was on the outside. And... Bobby Lashley said, fuck it, jumped over the ropes, over the top ropes, hit the steel cage, broke the steel cage side panel, and it crashed on Umaga as he went through. I hope they show that clip. That was so fucking dope. I ain't gonna hold you. I, I was like, yo, this is that was tough. I'm, that was just a tough visual, man. Like, oh, yeah. He's him. Against another billionaire, Vince McMahon, Mr. McMahon, who chose Umaga. The weeks leading up to WrestleMania 23 were filled with intense promos and hypes and just all out 
outlandish things to get people excited about this big celebrity-driven yeah. match. Both McMahon and Trump engaged in verbal battles with Lashley and Umaga playing supporting roles. At WrestleMania 23, though, the bell had to ring, and it was about Lashley and Umaga facing off in a hard-fought match where Stone Cold oh, Steve yep. Austin was the special guest referee. This was fun for me. Both wrestlers displayed their overwhelming strength in numerous high-impact moods and intense moments. As expected, the match saw interference. McMahon and Trump's involvement at ringside, of course, escalated things, and Austin's unpredictable nature added to it. It was a pure spectacle. Lashley defeated Umaga with a powerful spear. And, of course, what was online in the match? Well, hair the versus hair. losing billionaire got their head shaved. Yeah, Lashley was involved in one of the craziest moments uh -huh. in WWE where McMahon was forced to have his head shaved, bald in the middle of the ring with the Battle of the Billionaires, brought a significant mainstream level of attention to WWE around this time when some people feel they weren't a part of that. And many people credit, you know, Donnie Trump for all of it. But still, Lashley was a key part of the most talked about thing at that year's WrestleMania. Uh -huh. And he had been on the main roster of WWE for less than a few years. The match drew considerable media coverage, and Lashley came out as a highlight. This elevated his status within WWE and solidified his reputation as a top-tier talent and key player in major storylines. The magic of mania kept going for Bobby Lashley, and he started feuding with Mr. McMahon. Yeah. He even screwed him out of the ECW yep. championship with Mr. McMahon winning it himself. Uh, do-rag fucking Vince. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just do rag vents. Self, yeah. The boss wants to work with you. It's not a bad thing. You're doing pretty good. <laughs> he won the title back for McMahon in a street fight and became the first man to win the ECW title in WWE twice. Yeah, twice. However, not too long after this, he was drafted to Monday Night Raw. Therefore, he was stripped of the ECW championship, and it was time for him to move on to the next level. Lashley was getting huge reactions from fans, and yeah. WWE was ready to pull the trigger with him. He became the number one contender for WWE's championship, which was held by the most over man in the business, mm -hmm. John Cena. But unfortunately, he would lose in that Great American Bash main event match. It faced strong reviews, four stars in the Wrestling Observer newsletter. And if you wrestled Cena around this time, you had to be a villain. But Lashley remained a big, bold, muscle-bound babyface who got the test C nation and get respect and admiration along the way. Following this, he was taken off television and injured at the hands of Mr. Kennedy so he could heal from a legitimate injury he reportedly suffered during that big match with Cena. He was one of the biggest baby faces in WWE at the time, and fans were clamoring to see him return in a big way. But it simply wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. He was taken off TV for several months, and then surprisingly, in February of 2008, it was announced that he was released from his contract. This shocked everyone yeah. in wrestling. No one expected him to leave. Eve, WWE was so much hype behind him and so much surging popularity. He was on the verge of superstardom and now he was suddenly That's gone. the spot I'm talking about. So, so it was I believe that was on ECW. Yep. That's the spot I'm talking about. Superstardom and now That shit was so tough, bro. He just jumped over and oh my god. Such a dope spot, man. He's suddenly gone. So what happened? A bad fallout? There were reports that Lashley was frustrated with his creative direction in WWE. He was also unhappy with how the company had fired his then-girlfriend, Crystal Marshall. But that's also been debated. So what was the next move for Bobby Lashley, who was truly a big, big name in WWE? He began his MMA career in mm -hmm. 2008, a sport that was blowing up around this time. He debuted with a victory against Joshua Franklin. He signed with the Strike Force promotion in 2009 and won his debut fight there against Wes Sims. He then joined and leveled up to Bellator MMA in 2014, where he enjoyed significant success, going on an impressive winning streak, defeating notable opponents like Carl Atherton and Josh Appelt over his MMA a career, Lashley showcased his versatility with his size and an overall record of 15 wins and two losses. That's Lashley not bad. Was able to utilize his not bad at all. combat sports skills, a 78-inch reach, and truly test a lot of opponents. 
but Lashley is a lover of all things combat. He maintained his presence in pro wrestling with various independent promotions, mm-hmm. including in Japan and on a massive platform with TNA Wrestling, where he aligned himself with MVP and Kenny King, forming the powerful faction known as the Beatdown Clan, which became a highlight of TNA around this time, adding a new layer to Lashley's character. We would come back to him in MVP in a little while. Mm -hmm. Lashley won the TNA World Championship and feuded with many big-time names there, including Drew Galloway, you now know as Drew McIntyre. They would have several big matches, including a tap-out or knockout main event for Slammiversary's pay-per-view in 2016. Lashley maintained his presence as a true cross crossover superstar between pro wrestling and MMA, staying in promotions like AAA in Mexico, smaller independent promotions across the United States, Europe, and Japan, and his appearances helped draw significant eyeballs to every promotion he would hit. Finally, in 2018, 10 years after he left WWE, he decided to come back to the company. Mm -hmm. Lashley made a massive return in as big a way as you could. Timing in showbiz is everything, and he got the time when he interrupted the guitar strumming heel Elias in a concert on the night after WrestleMania. Yeah, this was pretty cool. No one in the wrestling world seeing it coming. Yeah, this was a dope moment. Welcome back, welcome back. No words were needed. Lashley wrecked Elias with an impressive delay delayed vertical suplex where he basically posed while slamming a full-grown man. (laughs) Lashley was pushed as a top-tier superstar from the get-go. He even got to beat Roman Reigns Mm -hmm. in a singles match at Extreme Rules clean down the middle. However, he would not maintain all of the baby... And here's the thing. When I said about the whole Roman Reigns situation, I mean as him as the tribal chief. You know, that's what I meant when I said... You know, him facing Roman Reigns would have been a dope moment as the tribal chief. That version of him and a baby face Bobby Lashley as well on top of with Montez and Angelo Dawkins. I think that would have just I think that would have been entertaining television. We probably would have known how it would have ended up, but I still think it would have been some entertaining television nonetheless, in my opinion. He faced good guy stuff and would lose an opportunity a few weeks later against Reigns to elevate to the Universal Championship. Following this, Lashley won the Intercontinental title and took on a new, more heelish persona with Leo Rush at Uh his side. This turned out pretty well, pretty well. Yeah, he got to do those posing segments, you know, where Leo Rush hyped up Lashley's favorite pose it was hilarious it would also play into the shield's final feud in wwe having a very entertaining main event at fast lane 2019 before a fun little program with braun Strowman, which saw him have a meaty chaotic last man standing match while some aspects were positive, there were also some negatives. He got entangled in a feud with Sami Zayn, where Zayn introduced Lashley's three sisters. The segment featured three male wrestlers cross-dressing as women and pretending they were Lashley's sisters. It was Awful. supposed to be funny, but it it was just sad. It, it wasn't good. And then there was the infamous lashley Lana uh. rusev love triangle. The storyline... Re- Even though Vince... May have seen him as a star. He also put this man in some horrible stories. Horrible stories. And I'm taking Bobby's words on it. He said Vince saw him as a star. As a big time is a big deal. I don't know if it was, he was talking about after these stories or or what. This was garbage. <laughs> Revolved around Lana, oh. yes, the ravishing Russian who was married to Rusev and cheated on him with Bobby Lashley. This angle included several provocative and sensational segments that pushed the limits of TVPG, with Lana kissing Lashley in front of Rusev, leading to a public humiliation of Rusev. Week by week, the segments became more and more controversial as Lana and Lashley continued their on-screen romance and were featured in risque segments intended for shock value. Instead of being presented as a dominant, serious, powerful athlete, Lashley was involved in soap opera storylines that leaned too much into the sports entertainment side of things, which didn't exactly align with his previous persona as a legitimate tough man. After Rusev got released from WWE, the storyline was cancelled, and soon Lana and Lashley parted ways. 
This is when the good days of Lashley's career started under some very odd circumstances. The pandemic had just begun around uh -huh. this time. MVP had recently made his way back to the company and a partnership was created between him and Lashley. MVP's promo skills complemented Lashley's imposing premise, mm -hmm. making them a formidable duo together. Now he was seen as a dominant, no-nonsense yep. powerhouse. And it worked. This transformation was key in changing the perception of Lash yes. as a mid-card reliable performer back into a main event star. He was also winning championships, including the U.S. title, and went on to have a dominant run with it. Soon, MVP also started managing the talents of Shelton Benjamin Her and Cedric Alexander. Along with Lashley, they would form The Hurt Business. Yes, they also revived the careers of multiple superstars, yes. giving them renewed purpose in the company and a collective effort. It provided a platform for all the members to shine and showcase their talents. And they were doing this during a very tough time for WWE, yeah, through all the Thunderdome stuff and beyond. Fans now were ready to see Lashley be on top once more, and he was already proving himself as the mantle of a performer who could truly display power at that level. He held the U.S. title for around a year before dropping it to Matt Riddle at Elimination Chamber 2021. On the same night, Drew McIntyre defended his WWE Championship in a brutal Elimination Chamber match. After the match, Lashley attacked McIntyre yep. and left him laying, allowing The Miz to cash in his yep. Money in the Bank contract, as we mentioned earlier. Although fans were not present for this big title change as it happened in the Thunderdome, everyone was excited for it. It moved the needle online, and it felt like a truly legitimizing moment for Lashley. However, what happened next just is unthinkable. WWE broke up the Hurt Business faction for yep. no clear reason. While MVP stayed with Lashley, Shelton and Cedric went their separate ways. The group that made him popular and revived his career to some degree were no more. At first, it Stops, didn't seem bro. to hurt the Almighty all that much. He went on a successful run defending the championship against Drew McIntyre, WrestleMania 36, yeah. with a shocking win, where a lot yeah. of people thought Drew was going to leave the title. Lashley left Florida with the title. Lashley yeah. continued to reign on. I enjoyed that match, too. Braun Strowman, Kofi Kingston, and Keith Lee, while still being the WWE champion. He also had an interesting feud with Goldberg. Yes, fans were missing the Hurt Business and wanted them to reunite, but for some reason, it never really happened. Lashley spent after a strong title defense against Randy Orton and had to go on an empty battery against a Money in the Bank cash-in at mm -hmm. the hands of Big E. Big E overwhelmed Lashley to take the title off him becoming the WWE Champion. That was in the fall of 2021, but Lashley would be back in the title hunt by the time we got to Royal Rumble. And then this whole situation with this nigga Brock over here talking about Bobby who? Exactly. They were burying this nigga on the mic, bro. I was like, come on, man. Don't disrespect him like that. January of 2022, a much anticipated match, one that people had wanted for a long, yeah. long time on a massive stage. Lashley versus Lesnar. Mm -hmm. Two guys that were cut from the same type of cloth to become legitimate wrestlers who became pro wrestling entertainment superstars. But the match was more or less an angle than yeah. it was a dream match. It yeah, was. disappointing as yeah. it was as it would just set up things later on the night. The Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns, made a surprise appearance and cost Lesnar the match, setting up a match between Lesnar and Reigns later on. Mm -hmm. Ashley just played a supporting role in the whole thing. That's but it. you know what he did do? He won the match and became WWE Champion once again. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the focus, but he was the champion. Lashley continued to serve a supporting role, even though he was the champion, losing the title back to Lesnar at the Elimination Chamber due to suffering a kayfabe concussion during yeah. The match. After returning, he started a feud with the gigantic Omos, beating him at WrestleMania 38 in Texas. An impressive match, but unfortunately, even with the uh, big man versus big man selling point, it didn't have a lasting place. However, on Raw, after WrestleMania 38, he, got betrayed. MVP, he turned on Lashley and aligned with Omos. Everything that made Lashley cool was not really there. There was no hurt business, there was no MVP. Lashley was all alone, still legitimate, but alone. You could argue that he did not need them as a group to become the superstar that he... He didn't need them, but 
it would have helped him and everybody else because you can buy into this group as being a serious, legitimate threat in WWE and having Bobby Lashley as the head guy. So, wouldn't say he needed them, but he could have benefited from them. They would have kept the damn group together. Now, maybe if Triple H was in charge, you know, Tri Triple H loved his factions, they probably would have kept them together. And we could have had some really good stuff, bro has become. Lashley went on solo again, winning the United States Championship once more before losing it to Seth Rollins. This was done to reignite his feud once more with Lesnar. He eliminated the Beast Incarnate at the Royal Rumble 2023 and defeated him via disqualification, not clean, after Lesnar performed a low blow on him. Mm -hmm. That's another unfortunate match between Lesnar and Lashley that didn't meet those perceived dream match standards fans gave it before the bell ever rang. Yeah. Fans wanted to see the big blow-off match between them at WrestleMania, but it never happened. Nope. Lesnar went against Omos at WrestleMania 39 in LA while Bray Wyatt started targeting Lashley. Yeah. Bray made a big return to WWE and was using all of his spooky magic to counteract Lashley's uh -huh. legitimacy. A match between Lashley and Bray was supposedly set for WrestleMania 39 in LA, but Bray pulled away due to suffering an mm -hmm. undisclosed illness at the time, leaving Lashley with no opponents on the grandest stage of them all. Later, he started recruiting the Street Profits, cheering them on during their matches. Soon, B-Fab would also join the group, forming what was known as the Pride. This could have worked if WWE booked them as a stronger force, much yes. like the Hurt Business, but their appearances and presentation were inconsistent on WWE yes, television. Uh, they were really never seen as a threat beyond a certain level on the WWE radar. They started feuding with Karrion Cross and his final testament group, beating them in a very fun yeah, match at WrestleMania definitely fun. 40. On April 12th, 2024, Lashley faced LA Knight and Santos Escobar in a match where he would lose. This was the final televised match of Bobby Lashley in WWE so far at the time of this recording. According to reports, Lashley might be leaving WWE, but it's not 100% confirmed. If that indeed does happen, it would be a big blow to WWE, as Lashley is truly a significant name who has always had a level of credibility attached to everything he does. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but it's Lashley. You know you're going to get something special. While he has accomplished so much in his career, it feels like he still hasn't reached his peak. Despite yeah. being 48 years old, doesn't he's look in it. this condition. He looks that good and doesn't seem doesn't to be look it at, all, at bro. any point. He can easily wrestle for several more years in this level of competition. We feel there is one more big run left in Big Bobby Lashley. Also, WWE never booked that big blow-off match between him and Lesnar. What are your thoughts on Bobby Lashley's career? Should he stay with WWE? This is a really good video. I, I like how they highlighted his career, and I, and I appreciate just, uh, you know, the amount of love they were showing for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, he deserves to be, I guess you can say, he deserves to be recognized for his greatness within WWE. It's just WWE has to do a better. They didn't do a really good job of maintaining it. They had the pieces and things were going to motion and it looked like they're going in the right direction. And then they would kind of falter. So if he does leave, that would suck, but I can see them going, him going to AEW, maybe starting up the Hurt Business there. They'll probably call it something else in AEW, maybe linking up with MVP. I do think that is most likely going to happen. I just don't see it happening on, and I don't see him staying because I don't think, I don't know if Triple H has anything for him. It doesn't seem like he does and not really focusing on him. So I honestly do think it may be a, a GG situation for Bobby Lashley being in WWE still. But uh, comment down below. Let me know. How do y'all feel about this situation? Do y'all think Bobby Lashley should stay in WWE or do y'all think he should go ahead and try uh, his luck in other promotions like AEW and other places outside of WWE. Y'all let me know down below. But I appreciate all love support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.